Hello again, rail fans. I got a question recently from one of the friends of the channel, Andrew L9191. Now, Andrew writes, people mention words like subdivisions and similar words that I assume have something to do with labeling a certain length of track. Can you describe how these names came to be and other similar words? How do they come up with the naming of a division or subdivision? Are there other named portions that are either bigger or smaller than these words? Now, this is a great question. Actually, these are great questions, Andrew, and I'm happy to answer them partially. Now, railroads, like any other large corporation or army or football conference, have to be divided into manageable pieces. In railroading, they call those pieces divisions. The FRA defines a division as a segment of the railroad under the supervision of a division manager. A subdivision as a portion of the railroad designated by timetable. Now those glossary now those glossary definitions are a little skinny on helping us understand what those terms mean. But basically a division is a big chunk of a railroad that usually covers a whole state or even a couple of states. A subdivision is one route of that division and more frequently just one piece of that route. Here in Florida, all of CSX's operations are included in the Jacksonville division of the company. That extends from Savannah, Georgia on the northeast side, Manchester, Georgia on the northwest side, Montgomery, Alabama on the west, and Miami, Florida on the south. Divisions are usually named for a major terminal in that area. In addition to Jacksonville, CSX also has the Baltimore, Florence, Chicago, Nashville, Atlanta, Albany, Great Lakes, and Louisville divisions. Each division is divided into subdivisions. Think of these as different highway names. Here on the Jacksonville division, we're at South Lakeland on the Lakeland subdivision, set up for L-766, a local coming out of Winston Yard and going out to work customers. 766 pulls up to the signal at South Lakeland and stops. He's got a red signal there because another train, M452, is coming south and the dispatcher decided that 452 needed to keep coming, likely because 452 is a pretty large train and L-766 isn't. It's easier to get a five-car train started than it is one that's a mile and a half long. M452 is daily freight traffic, Hialeah, Florida to Waycross, Georgia, and stopping to work Winston Yard here in Lakeland. 452 has already traveled over three subdivisions to get this far, the Miami, the Auburndale, and the Carter's subs. The Miami sub, which runs from Hialeah Yard to Delta at West Palm Beach, and is actually the state of Florida's SFRTA, which hosts tri-rail commuter trains by day and CSX by night. The Auburndale sub, which runs from Delta to Auburndale Interlocking, and the Carter sub, which runs from Auburndale to here at South Lakeland. Past this signal to the south, the track becomes the Lakeland subdivision, running all the way to Mango Siding, where it then becomes the Tampa Terminal subdivision. The same track route divided into manageable pieces. After M452 clears South Lakeland, the local train, L-766, gets a green signal to go. Like I said, 766 is a tiny train. Only the four boxcars on an old chassis shoving platform, what we used to know as a caboose. Note how he's diverging from the main line, taking that big left turn. He's apparently going to turn this big Y in order to back down a dead-end industrial spur about a mile away, the CH spur. Now, I don't actually know this for sure because I didn't hang around to watch it, and I wish I had him. This is where different subdivisions take on importance. He's turning on to the Vitus subdivision, part of an old Atlantic coastline branch line route that once went from here all the way to DuPont, Georgia on the Bowline. It was commonly referred to as the High Springs, Maine. High Springs was a significant terminal on the line that handled much of the freight and perishable traffic out of Tampa and South Florida. 
Flying over the place at Lakeland, we can see what's happening. The curve track is what L-766 just took to go onto the bridge and onto the Vita sub. This big Y is Lakeland Junction, where three subdivisions converge. The Lakeland sub on the west, the Carter sub continuing on to Auburndale and beyond, and the Vita sub leading off to the north and eventually what is now the S-line. Directly underneath the overpass is the actual Lakeland Junction switch. This is the point where the AR line joins the A line. A junction is generally the point at which a branch line joins a main line. Subdivisions help dispatchers keep traffic coordinated and trains separated. They can be really long, like the Fitzgerald sub that runs 199.2 miles from the south end of the yard at Manchester, Georgia, to the switch at Rice Junction in Waycross. And there are tiny subs. The Aiken subdivision in Florida's Bone Valley runs 6.9 miles from South Mulberry to Bradley Junction. The size of subdivisions is determined by what kind of traffic they carry and where they go. M452 was held up two miles farther down the line at South Winston Y. His move into the yard required a pull-by and back-in move, meaning he was to pull his entire train past the Y and back the whole thing into the yard. But the Amtrak Silver Star was in the picture now, coming up behind 452. Even though there was nearly 20 minutes separation between the two trains, 452's backup move would require him to pull beyond where this double track ended and only a single track continued south. Any kind of mishap out there on that single track, like a broken knuckle or a separated air hose, would strand Amtrak and its passengers behind the freight train until it was cleared. Not worth the risk. So, in a few minutes, here came Amtrak 91, the Silver Star, on track two of the double main line going around M452. 90, one engine, 180, two south, approach medium, northwest of Arbor. Hey, approach medium, northwest of Arbor, one out. Winston Y is a great spot for rail fans to catch the action. The freight train will wait at that red signal until the dispatcher lines up a move for him to pull on down and then back up, crossing over to the number two track and then into Winston Yard. Our track is 180 north, clear for Two nine seven, approach medium, both into Albany. Twelve miles east on the A-line, we have another example of why railroads are broken into subdivisions. This is Auburndale Yard. At one time, it was a major crossing point of the Seaboard Airline and the Atlantic Coastline Main Lines. The Seaboard's Miami subdivision branched off the main line up near Wildwood and came 278 miles southeastward through Auburndale and on to Miami. Today, the once gigantic Miami sub is just a secondary route with four Amtraks, two big freights, two intermodals, and a few locals. The Coleman to Auburndale segment was pulled up in the 1980s. The West Palm to Miami segment was sold to the state for commuter service, but CSX has trackage rights over that segment for its freight service to South Florida. But at least this old seaboard subdivision is still paying its own way. The yellows at the top of each signal give us approach indications at the southward McDonald connection. That means two trains are coming. Arriving first from Orlando is Amtrak 97, the Silver Meteor coming off the Carter sub of the A-Line onto what's now the Auburndale sub. It's fall 2023 and the new Siemens Charger locomotives are starting to show up on Amtrak's Florida trains, though still in the trailing position for now. Just a minute and 30 seconds later, here is Amtrak 91, coming off the other side of the Carter sub from the west and his Tampa and Lakeland stops.
He'll follow 97 into Winter Haven just a few miles ahead, but he'll have to hold out until 97 finishes his work at the station and moves on south. There's only one track through the Winter Haven station. It is likely that 91 will be running on approach signals behind 97 all the way into Hialeah this afternoon. When these two trains made their turns here, they turned on to the Auburndale sub and came under the control of a new dispatcher, the JG desk. He'll handle both trains until they pass West Palm and turn on to the SFRTA, the South Florida Regional Transportation Authority, where they'll be under the control of a non-CSX dispatcher until reaching the end of the line at Hialeah in Miami. United one and Track Engine in 1A South, they approach Spirit Lake. Track 1. They approach Spirit Lake 91. Auburndale's quiet, rusty atmosphere today doesn't give any hints to what happened here in the 1920s. In that crazy decade, South Florida was booming. Northerners couldn't wait to buy land here. So the railroads took advantage. Seaboard's audacious president, S. Davies Warfield, immediately branched off the main line near Wildwood, bought land in a virtual straight line toward West Palm, and built the Miami Extension, crossing the ACL Main here at Auburndale. For the next 30 years, SAL's new lines would be one of the two leading passenger service routes to South Florida. But by the mid-1980s, everything had changed. There were no more crack passenger trains, and perishable freight traffic had been lured over to highway trucks. So now, on the track where 80-mile-an-hour silver meteors, stars, and sunlands once streaked by, they leave the local switcher parked on weekends, because ain't nothing coming through here anymore. There are a couple of freight customers still up there, but only for a couple of miles. After that, the track just stops in the weeds. Back west on the A-Line, Plant City is where three subdivisions cross the same piece of real estate. Underneath is the Lakeland subdivision of the A-Line that goes on to Tampa. Crossing at 90 degrees are the Plant City subdivision going to Welcome and the Bone Valley, and the Yeoman subdivision, the S-Line, coming out of Wildwood and headed to Yeoman Yard in Tampa. It's mid-October late in the afternoon and there's a burst of traffic here. First up is Amtrak 92 coming out of his Tampa station stop and heading northward on the A-Line to Orlando, Savannah, Charleston, Washington, D.C. and New York. Next is L-778, shuttle traffic out of Tampa's Yeoman Yard, but headed to Winston Yard at Lakeland. So he's also on the A-Line, as the seaboard track doesn't go to Lakeland. So to review, a division is a section of the railroad network that covers around a state or maybe a couple of states or maybe pieces of a, a couple of states. It's a big area. A subdivision is one route in the division and more often one segment of a route in the division. Some railroads have different terms for the same thing, like Norfolk Southern calls their subdivisions districts. But it seems to be basically the same thing we're talking about here. Now, I gotta thank you for some new stuff. A longtime friend of the channel, Breland Terry out of West Palm Beach, sent me this brand new Milepost Zero hat because he, was, uh, he felt bad that I had to throw my other one away because it smelled so bad. Uh, he also sent me that Milepost Zero sign there. Now that is an authentic plastic replica of the real thing now. I don't want anybody to think that Breland has uh, taken that uh, real milepost zero sign in downtown Key West, although I'm sure the Florida DOT has had to replace that thing dozens if not hundreds of times over the years. So many thanks to you Breland, much, much appreciated. Please hit the like button. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you'll know when I post a new video. Write your comments in the comments section down below and uh, so I'll know how y'all are doing out there. 
And please, let's set aside some time to meet up again somewhere, somewhere out there on the high iron. And until that time, this is Danny Harmon.